Inspired by Games is back. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Bafiki. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where I create game development tutorials and from time to time I upload my short films. If you're interested, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. I'm excited to let you guys know that I'm working on a new course which is Unity Filmmaking 101. If you'd like to hear more about it or get special offers whenever it's out, subscribe to the finally newly created newsletter and you will be updated with anything that I create whether new tools, tutorials, inspired by games episodes, or the course itself or other courses. And I'm excited to hear about your feedback and all the good stuff you guys say. So, back to the tutorial. Today, what we'll be doing is recreating the Force from Star Wars. We're finally back with the fourth episode of Inspired by Games, and no pun intended. So this is the end results. You can pull objects and throw them away. Or you can just simply throw them away. So we can take these guys and whoo, throw them away just like that. Take these and throw them. Or you could just like push from here. Alright, so that's what we'll be doing in this tutorial. So let's just break it down. We have first, the moment I hold the right mouse button, it's gonna pull the object and it's keep it in here and if I leave the right mouse button you just leave it down here again if I right click it's here if I left mouse button look what happens it just throws it away and if I'm not holding the right mouse button and just click the left mouse button which is the third action which is simply pushing them away alright so let's get started what we will be doing is we're gonna create a raycast coming out from the camera pointing out to the center of the screen and whatever it touches it will create an overlap sphere and anything within that sphere will be recorded so we will control these objects after we get all of these objects recorded from the overlap sphere we're gonna pull it near the player so what we will need is some sort of an empty game object to be holding the rigid bodies over here and if we press the left mouse button, it will fire away these objects which are already recorded. And then for the push force, we're going to talk about it when we start creating that feature. Which is pretty simple and it's almost the same. So the first thing we're going to do is creating a script force controller. So I'm just going to remove everything and let's start from the basics. Alright, so first thing first, we need access to the camera. So I'm just going to create a variable here and assign it from the editor. And then a boolean to store the uh, pull force information whether we're pulling or not to store some powers we have a float type pull strength and push strength we're gonna assign these values later and let's store the uh, transform of the place where we're gonna hold the objects you know it's like the hand of the player or just an object in the air so I'm just going to call that hold position. And let's go to the update function. Now we have a couple of actions. First, we have button down, pull and gather objects. And then holding the button, which is pulling as long as we're holding it. And then once we release that button, the right mouse button, we're gonna let it fall and then the left mouse button which is throw so throw left mouse button down all right so first thing if input dot get button down fire one which is the left mouse button we're gonna set pull force equals true and we're gonna gather the objects information to do that, we're going to create a function public void and we're going to call it git pull objects and we're going to call it here. So we want to record whatever objects we have. So if we're looking here, we want to record all of these objects into a variable so we can control that whether we're pulling or throwing them away. So here I'm going to create a public collider 
and call it target objects first thing we're going to create the raycast for that we will have to create a raycast hit variable then we check if physics dot raycast we're going to start the ray from the camera transform position and the direction is going to be the forward of that camera so we're going to convert it from local to world space vector 3 dot forward and then out hit to save the information and the distance we want it to travel let's create a variable and call it range public float pull or yeah pull range something like 25 type here pull range so if we hit an object or any surface we're gonna create an overlap sphere to check the surroundings of that hit point and gather all of these objects so target objects is equals to physics dot overlap sphere the position is going to be the hit dot point and then the radius the bigger the radius the more objects will be affected the smaller the less objects will be affected so we're going to create another float here and call it pull radius equals four and then pull radius here so here we're gonna fire a raycast from the center of the camera then we're gonna create an overlap sphere and anything inside of that will be saved inside of this variable and before we do anything let's just reset it each time equals no and hit save let's add our script in here assign the camera these values we're gonna modify them later because we don't need them at the moment in the hold position let's create an empty game object we call it hold position and make it somewhere here just enable tag so we can see it clearly yeah somewhere around here and go back to the player and just assign it oh sorry here it should be fired too we're talking about the right mouse button not the left mouse button and now if I hit play if I click right the right mouse button you'll see a lot of objects been registered in here so now that we've gathered all the objects let's start pulling them we're gonna check as long as we're clicking the right mouse button so we're gonna apply pull force which is a function we haven't created yet let's create it now public void pull force and here's what we're gonna do first thing we want to check if the target is not equals to null and target objects dot length is actually more than zero and then we're gonna go through each one of them and we will check if they have a rigid body component I know this is not really performance friendly but we can optimize it like some other time but here we're just breaking it down for the sake of fun and learning and experimenting so maybe we could optimize it in another tutorial but for now we will just try to get it working <laughs> so if it has a rigid body component then we're gonna get that component again and modify its velocity its velocity it's gonna be the target which is the hold position dot position minus the current position of the uh, object we get the difference and then multiplied by pull strength multiplied by time dot delta time so if i hit save and go back we don't have a strength yet so i'm just gonna assign it something like 500 hit play all right cool look what we have here awesome so if you're looking just to pull objects then you're done <laughs> and now let's go to the next step which is throwing them away before we do that we just want to release pull force to set it to false so if input the git button up fire it to pull force equals false and now let's throw some soldiers if input dot git button down fire one we want to check if we're pulling if we're using pull force so basically they're on the air we're gonna throw them 
else which means we're not actually holding the right mouse button so we're just pushing them away so that's going to be push so if pull force first thing we're going to do is pull force equals false so we won't be pulling them we will throw them right okay and we're gonna throw force let's create another function public void throw force and what we will be doing here is pretty similar to what we did with pull force the only difference is that instead of modifying the velocity directly we will be adding force so add force and then the force direction is going to be the camera forward direction so cam dot transform dot transform direction vector 3 dot forward and then we're gonna multiply it by the push strength and the force mode is going to be impulse so it just happens instantly in one frame it will change its force or velocity so if we hit save now and go back let's give it a strength like 50 hit play and now if I click the left mouse button it throws them but they come back well because Disabling pull force doesn't affect the actual pulling, so we will just add this one additional condition. If pull force is true, then we will be doing the logic to pull the object. So if I hit play now, pull them towards me, and if I hit left mouse button, woo, throw them away. That is cool. <laughs> Alright, now we're left with the last thing, which is if I just want to push them away without pulling and then throwing them away that is the push method or the push um, feature that feature is pretty similar to the pull method but the only difference is that the pull method fires a ray cast and then creates an overlap sphere and gets the objects from that distant place however the push feature is much simpler we will have just an empty game object here that will fire overlap sphere instead of creating a raycast and then the overlap sphere so what we will do is just duplicate that one and call it push position reset the x and the y maybe yeah somewhere like here so we, it will create a sphere anything here will be pushed away so let's go back to the script and create a reference for it push position and now we're gonna do the magic here so if we're not pulling we will be pushing the objects away but we just need one more thing just like what we did here git pull objects we're gonna duplicate that function and call it git push objects and instead of using a raycast and all of that it's pretty much simpler than that we're gonna create a sphere from the uh, push position and then we will use the push radius or we don't have that yet so push radius equals I don't know three go down here push radius and let's see oh yeah sorry push position dot position and we've got the push objects so let's create another function which is going to be the last one public void push force first thing we'll do is gathering the object so git push objects and then it's so simple we can just recall throw force one more time and then we're gonna call the function in here push force save and let's see what we have okay go back to the editor and assign push position here and you should have your features all set now we can pull them throw them away I could even push that is super cool alright so now we're done and we're just left with the animation implementation if I select the player armature here go to the animator 
I've created another layer, which is the top layer and added a mask to it. So only the top is being affected. And here I have three animations, throw and pull and push force. And I've just transitioned to each one of them using these three triggers. So let's go and implement them quickly. These three animations, I got them from Mixamo. If you want to know how to use Mixamo animations, you can check out this tutorial, which I created specifically for this point. Let's create an animator variable. In the moment, we just press the right mouse button. We're going to set trigger, pull, copy that, and we're going to go down to throw and trigger the throw animation. Paste it again here and trigger the push animation. So if you go back now, let's assign the animator to the animator variable here. Hit play. Let's see. All right. Awesome. That is working just fine. Throw them away. Okay. That is cool. And one thing can be done is to time it perfectly, we could use animation events to call the actual force. So when the player pushes his hands away, then only then we apply the force instead of applying the force and then the animation um, doesn't really sync with it. So this is just an extra thing you could do. And again, I'm working on a filmmaking course. If you're interested, subscribe to the newsletter to get updates and special offers whenever the course is out. And uh, I really would like to hear your feedback and what do you guys think about this tutorial and about the filmmaking in general with Unity and what do you want me to cover in the course. So this is Amar Bafaki. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.